I, a while ago, one of my daughters became a model. And what she modeled became the centerfold of a, a rather glossy magazine. You might ask, what was she modeling? Well, she was about 18 months old and she was modeling a t-shirt for a Christian uh, conference or a Christian camp that we were going on. She was modeling a t-shirt. When we come to this passage in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 21, Paul tells us we have to model God. Be an example of God. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Let's pray together. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, as we come to your word, may we know you speaking. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in you, our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, our present friend. We worship you and ask that as we read your word, we will hear your voice. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As we read your word, may you find us listening. So Paul tells us in verse one that we have to be an example of God. In a lot of Paul's letters, he begins his letters with high thinking, um, thoughts about God and about our relationship with, with him through Jesus Christ. And then as he comes towards the end of the letters, often he will turn it to, OK, so that's what we believe. How should we live? And Ephesians 5 is one of those how should we live passages. And really what Paul is saying is we should live holy. And um, I title this talk, Be the Light Kind of Smelly. So he says, follow God's example as dearly loved children and live a life of love as Christ loved and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. In the Old Testament part of the Bible, when they were setting up the kind of the, the how to and uh, of worship, one of the things that they were told to do um, through Moses was to get the perfumers to make special perfumes. One was a special oil, an anointing oil, and the other was a special incense. And it says in Exodus chapter 30 that that oil and that, that fragrance of oil and that fragrance of incense was not to be repeated anywhere else. Um, so it could only be incense for worship and oil for worship. It's interesting because around the worship cult with all the sacrifice of animals, there would often be the smell of death. But the oil and the incense covered over that smell of death as a sacrifice was made. The oil and incense made a fragrant offering to the Lord. And Paul is saying, make your life a fragrant offering to the Lord. So people smell Christ in you, smell Christ from you. What's that look like? What does it smell like? Paul says, well, there shouldn't be a hint of sexual immorality, verse 3. There shouldn't be any impurity or greed. They're improper for God's holy people. There should be no obscenity, no foolish talk, coarse joking. They're out of place, but rather thanksgiving. And he says this strongly. No immoral, immoral or impure person or greedy person or idolatrous person has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. And it says, don't let anybody deceive you with empty words because those things belong to God's judgment. Don't be partners with them. Paul's saying that we should live such exemplary lives that people find Jesus Christ smelling from us um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, to some people we the, we're the aroma of life, and to, the, to others who don't want to know Jesus, we are the smell of death. But we should smell different because we're Christians. 
We should have a different fragrance about us that's, that's full of purity, that's full of holiness, that's full of the love of Jesus Christ. We should be different. Paul says we should smell different. I wonder, some of those things that Paul lists here are constant challenges, not just for Paul then, 2,000 years later, sexual, sexual immorality, impurity, greed, coarse joking, those things are still around. They don't go away. And Paul's saying as Christians, we don't have anything to do with them. Let's just stop a moment and ask God to deal with any of that in our lives. Ask him to change us. Fill us with the love of Christ, which is so pure. It smells good. Paul doesn't just say smell right. He says, um, be fruitful lights. Um, lights so that there's something radiant coming from us. And what's radiant is the fruit of God's life in us. Paul is absolutely convinced that because we've become Christians, we've been utterly changed. Verse 8, he says, once you were darkness, now you are light of the Lord. Live as children of the light. And when you're children of the light, that, that fruit consists of all the goodness, righteousness and truth. So do these things, find out what pleases the Lord and do those too. Don't do things that are to do with darkness. Let your light expose them and live completely differently. Amazing. I, I don't know if you can imagine a, a tree. I'm not talking about a Christmas tree, but imagine a tree that's full of light bulbs. But then as you go and pick a light bulb that's beautiful, bright and radiant, and you eat into it, you don't get glass. You get a glorious taste, a joyful taste of something, I don't know, grapes or a pineapple or what's your favorite fruit you bite into the light and it tastes so good and Paul's saying people need to find you and know you and bite into the light and find that you taste good there is fruit in the glory of the light that you are that's a beautiful thought isn't it that we live such fragrant and holy lives that, that we're an utter blessing, a light-filled, bright, glorious blessing to others. Again, let's stop and pray and ask God to do that in us. Lord, make me a fruitful light. And so Paul challenges us and says in verse 15, be careful. Um, be careful how you live. We're called to be different. Don't live as unwise, live as wise. Make the most of every opportunity for the days are evil. Don't be foolish, but understand, understand what the Lord's will is. And then he says, don't get drunk on wine. Do you know there are three biblical positions on drink? Drink, and that's alcohol. First of all, um, Christians may drink in moderation. Christians may choose not to drink at all, but drunkenness is sin. And Paul says, don't get drunk on wine. That leads to debauchery, it leads into sin. But he says, in complete contrast, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you'll be fruitful lights. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Living holy is not meant to be a dirge. Living holy is not meant to be through gritted teeth. Living holy should leave us singing joyfully to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God our Father for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, some of us think that holiness is hard. And it might be. Holiness is costly and it can cost. Sometimes we may be rebuked or reviled or persecuted for our holiness. But I want to tell you this. If you live holy, you'll live right. 
if you live right, you will live in joy, the joy of the Holy Spirit at work within you. God bless you today. Thank you for your time.